it's here. They finally did it. The Augustina Oktoberfest beer for 2023 has been released, and now we can finally announce a winner from this year's Big Six. Hello and welcome back to the channel and yes that's right I've finally got my hands on number six the Augustina Brow Oktoberfest beer it was the missing child from the set I had to go somewhere else to acquire it but it has finally been released and now we can finally answer the question which is the greatest Oktoberfest beer of this year before we do that though let's remind ourselves of what has happened in this little competition so far unfortunately right at the bottom of the list is spartan not fighting anyone at the minute for fifth place all on its own it really was just the poor choice of the bunch tying for third or equal third slash fourth we've got the hofbrau oktoberfest beer and the hacker shore now out of these two i do need to point out that actually i think that hofbrau is the better beer but what i have noticed this year is that it is incredibly inconsistent i've had other bottles since my review and one of them was incredible it probably would have been tying for first place along with the other two at this point but unfortunately some of the others well they were less good so it's a fantastic beer if you get a good bottle but inconsistency is just where it's at and then of course fighting for first place right now we have the Paulana Oktoberfest beer and the Lohenbrau Oktoberfest beer both on 27. Personally I actually think the Paulana is a much better beer for me as in I enjoy it more but in terms of a ranking I couldn't really mark the Lohenbrau down on anything it just yeah, wasn't as good for me personally, but they are tied. So what is going to change? Well, I've got no idea really. I know that last year some people said that they kind of waited for this. They were excited by it. It was getting released a bit later, not with the rest. And they had massive expectations and it was a bit of a flop. I don't know, truthfully. And I don't think I've had this one before ever. In fact, I think it's the only one of the core six, the big six Oktoberfest Munich breweries that, yeah, I haven't ever had in life so this is going to be a new experience for me before we crack into it here is a quick look at that bottle um again as with many of these it's about as traditional as you're going to get augustina brow oktoberfest beer um with uh, a nice picture of uh somewhere in munich i imagine uh, maybe that's even the festival itself actually in one of the tents because the tents aren't really tents they're massive buildings there is no label on the back of this one but yeah Let's get into it. Of course, we're back in with the inappropriate glassware for this year's Oktoberfest series. It is because we just needed a good vessel to drink them all in. I didn't have an appropriately sized stein. It looks silly pouring a half amount. Um, so yes, that is technically not true anymore though, because when I bought these, I also bought a couple of appropriately sized steins, but it would be unfair for us to treat this one any differently. So yeah, same situation, same glass, freshly washed and rinsed as before. Let's get it open. Very golden in colour again this one. A common trait in this year's lineup. Only one beer so far was truly, truly a bit darker. And as before, I'm going to let this settle down, get the whole bottle in so it is a completely fair test. And we'll be right back with you once well, that happens. Okay then, that actually didn't take much convincing. It's pretty well behaved in the glass. It's got a nice foamy white head. As with all of them, it's breaking up a bit. It's not that creamy looking. If I kind of try and get rid of the condensation on the glass and hold it up to the light, proper yellow hue, as many of them have been. As I've said, a bit of a stuck record now. I would prefer these to be just a smidge darker. Maybe it's a malt thing this year. I'm pretty sure they were all a bit darker in years gone by. Maybe I'm just misremembering, who knows? Um, or maybe I'm getting them just confused with other people's Fest beers and Marzen's. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice looking thing. It's as good as any of the others. And I can't... Yeah, I can't, I can't pick any fault with that, really. Um, the head has now kind of started to behave a few close bubbles on it, so it looks like it's going to stick around at least for a little while. As a result, nothing wrong with it, nothing exceptional. Kicking off with a nine. Strong start. Okay, then. Aroma time. Ooh, okay. Okay. 
I have complained that a lot of this year's Big Six beers had quite a muted aroma. I think the only ones that didn't were the Paulana and to some degree the Hackershaw, although the Hackershaw's aroma wasn't all that good. This one, it's there. It's definitely on the better side in terms of just a volume of aroma, like how much you can pick out. It's not super malt forward on the nose, it's much more citric and kind of fresh green hop aroma there. Yeah, absolutely. Bags of citrus, well, for the style. It's not like a citrusy hoppy IPA, but for the style, very citrusy. And it has got a nice mineral backbone. There is a metallic note, which I've also mentioned in a lot of the others. And I kind of said, look, it is an acceptable and appropriate note to have in these beers, but well, you just don't want tons of it. It can be overbearing. It just makes the whole thing taste like tin. What I say, it's very alluring in this. It's like, it's just the right amount. It's there, it's noticeable. It's not overbearing on anything else. It's just very, very nice. Is there anything about this I don't like? I mean, personally, I would have preferred a bit more malt in there, but that's just a personal preference thing. I don't feel like I can mark it down for that. There's nothing standout impressive other than the fact that it's incredibly good, but just not quite into that top ranking space so it's got to be a nine it's nine for nine away which means it is level pegging in my mind i believe with the two top runners at the minute those of course being the paulana and the low and brow who got nines across the board so it's in a good place this beer it has to be said it is in a very good place but now the true test let's get into it cheers I feel like it's hiding its secrets from me you know what I mean? Like, you can tell there's good stuff there, but it's not immediately obvious. Very crisp, this one. Very refreshing. As per the nose, the malt in this is subtle. It's not a big, proper, malty, intensely malty lager. The hop character is nice, as you'd expect from the aroma. It is citrusy, very kind of fresh, green. It's not quite grassy. It's a bit almost lightly floral, but super, as I say, super refreshing. If Oktoberfest this year is, well, in a heat wave and it's red hot, I'll be honest, this is the one you're gonna want. This is insanely just pleasing from a refreshment perspective. Very, very nice. But I also have to say, it doesn't feel all that special. Right then, let's do a quick top to bottom taste test so we can try and work through it, see if we can pick anything else out because it just feels a bit closed off. The quality's there, the flavors are nice, they're balanced, they're, everything is ducks in a row. Like, there's really nothing wrong with it at all. But I'm just, I'm not being wowed. I'm really not being wowed. So, initially, soft, low-key, sweet, almost slightly creamy malt right on the front of the tongue there. Then, kind of during that first third, carbonation comes in, spritzy, super refreshing. The hop barrels in. It's not too much, but it's distinctly lemony and you think that that kind of low-key sweet malt profile we're actually getting kind of lemon cheesecake vibes from this um but like it, it's in a good like it's a good thing it's a good thing low-key lemon cheesecake granted it's not smacking you around the face with it but you kind of add those little flavor bits together that is where you're going to end up and middle of the tongue bitterness kicks in a bit stays it's strong but not too much it's nice it's refreshing bitterness and some of that mineral quality also starts to ramp up. It doesn't become metallic, I don't think at any point actually, despite what the aroma was like, but you get that sensation of quality water source that you do get in a lot of these beers. But that said, in many of the others, that tends to stick around and do interesting things with the other flavors and makes it quite an experience. This one's just a bit of a tip of the hat and then just, yeah, peters away really. Um, that's a bad pun, peat, mineral, bog. Anyway, um, you know what I mean? It's it, it's there, but it's not doing anything more than it needs to. It's just saying hello, disappearing again. And it's not a bad thing, but I would just like it to stick around to kind of fill in some of the gaps. It's a really funny one, this, because there are no, as I said, there's no issues with it. It's fantastic beer. I love it. I'll happily drink loads of it. But there is almost no standout flavour. It's got to the point of balance where I guess it's too balanced in that there's not enough of anything to really start doing some interesting, funky kind of interactions in the flavours and leading you somewhere you might not expect. 
it's just it's very reserved it's super balanced perfectly executed but it's reserved it is the easiest to drink probably of the lot that's not a bad thing it's Oktoberfest you're going to want to drink quite a bit of beer I would imagine but as a result of that I'm just not I'm not getting the fizz anyway finishing off back of the tongue pop comes back in start to drift out of the citrusy thing into a slightly very lightly flowery floral sensation the malt is always there but it's just playing such such kind of a backseat passenger role that it's just it's just helping everything move along and you almost don't really get to appreciate it what is there feels like quality which is not something we've been able to say about all of these but i just want more i want more of it um and then on the aftertaste bitterness kicks back in the malt does come to the fore a little bit briefly nice biscuity kind of short ready malt and just as you're starting to appreciate it you get another last little tickle of bitterness to make you want to go back for another sip and almost all of the flavour is just gone, wiped out. This is infuriating because it is perfect if everything was just amped up by another 20%, if that makes sense. Like, it's so incredibly good because it's so incredibly balanced, but that, in this instance, is just a bit of a downfall somehow. As a result, obviously, it's not taking a 10. It's not going to jump to the top of the leaderboard here. It's just not got enough special going on. If I were to give it a 9, I'd be doing a bit of a disservice to the other two beers that got straight 9s across the board because they did have something going on. It was a redeeming feature somewhere. I preferred the Paul on it, so it was malty, it was more malt forward. And meanwhile, the low and brow was more hop forward and it was something, there was something to hang on to there and kind of go through the process. This, there isn't really anything to hang on to. It is perfectly balanced. And as I said, if all those flavors were just lifted 20%, this would easily be matching those. No questions asked, but it's not. And I've, I've got to mark a point down for it just being a bit too reserved, a bit too easy, a bit not quite interesting enough, but it is only one point, which if my quick mass is correct and it'll be on the screen now, puts this cleanly in third place. Well, there we have it then. We can definitively now say that of the 2023 Oktoberfest beers, at least in my opinion and probably no one else's, that the Paulana and the Lohenbrau are the best beers. In my opinion, the Paulana actually well supersedes it, but it's just that's just a taste preference thing. In terms of quality and where they're at, I think they are both level pegging. This one coming in for the clean sweep for third, uncontested on its own and then we've got a joint set for fourth and then finally spartan down at the bottom as i said earlier the hofbrau really was a shame just because of the inconsistency in that beer at this time it's it would easily have matched this to be honest and maybe even kind of superseded it by half a point if they were all as good as they could be and to be honest it might even have taken a, a, a clean sweep right to the top but it hasn't so there you go that is your Oktoberfest rankings from me for this year i have to say i've had an absolute blast doing it so yeah cheers to Oktoberfest. i've just realized that i actually got a bit too excited and carried away into reviewing this beer and didn't tell you how strong it was this one's rocking in at 6.3 percent abv which i believe makes it match the strongest of the lot um, so it's definitely a big hitter the booze doesn't really come through to be honest like i mean it does a little bit but not it's masking it pretty well and yeah it just it's annoying because it's fantastic if you've got mates who you like just like generic lager and you want to try and start to slowly introduce them into some more interesting variants this would not be a bad shout although if they stop swilling this like they do that four percent stuff then well they probably won't last very long but as long as they're careful i think it is a fantastic way to do it and to be honest that is really all i've got to say about it so as always thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video please like it if you haven't already subscribed if you'll be so kind and i will catch you next time cheers